welcome back. We're 90 something days out till Christmas. Yay! I am so excited. The fall and the winter are my favorite times of the year and Christmas is just the absolute best and I am trying hard not to decorate my house already. Um, I wanted to share with you guys a couple of the books that we've read. I'm going to do a little bit of a review really quick that we've read for Christmas in general. We try to pick a book, a Christmas book to read. We start reading it as a family. Um, right after Thanksgiving, we read it after lunch in our homeschool program. Um, and so I'm gonna share it with you. I'm gonna share with you a book that we read traditionally. It's our tradition for Christmas Eve. A book that we traditionally kind of go through um, every year, but it's not necessarily um, a book that we really read because we really don't read it. And also um, a book that, the book that we chose last year to read for our Christmas read that we started after Thanksgiving until Christmas. The first book I'm going to share with you is, well, let me do a disclaimer. My family, we have a good sized family. We're pretty, we're pretty avid readers, some more than others. And we are hard on books. So if you want pretty books, you're not going to find them all here. I have a pretty good sized library. I'm in um, our classroom and we have books everywhere, but um, we can be pretty hard on books. So here's the first book. Ready? It's The Night Before Christmas. This book had this wonderful, beautiful, colorful, really vivid um, book cover on it. And as you can see, it doesn't have the book cover. It's just the book now, right? But this is twas, this is the night before Christmas. And this book is written by Clement C. Moore. It has a CD that comes with it. So you can have the audio book of it and kind of go, your kids can listen to the audio and go through the book at the same time. And the it's performed by on the audio CD by uh, Peter Paul and Mary. I like this book. We got this book many years ago from my husband's mother. Shout out to Grandma. Hey, Grandma, thank you. So here's the book. And it is The Night Before Christmas. My family loved this book. I have high schoolers, middle schoolers, elementary kids. I like it. My husband like it. It is very colorful, very descriptive. Um, it's very vivid. The colors are very vivid and my family like it. This is traditionally what we read on Christmas Eve. Traditionally, we go out, we do some Christmas caroling, and um, we come home, we do the things that we do. We pull this book out and we read it as a family under the Christmas tree. And then, in front of the fireplace, and then my children put out milk and cookies for mommy and daddy to eat. Yay! And then we watch and see, you know, on the news, where is Santa Claus at over the nation now? Is he getting close to our house? And then they run upstairs excitedly and jump in the bed and go to sleep until Christmas morning. Now, my children know there's not a Santa Claus, but we still like to play the game anyway. And so, this is a book that we read. It's the night before Christmas. It's all about Santa Claus coming to visit the house. It's a typical story that you know. Twas the night before Christmas, and all through the house, not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. So this is a great story. I, I would highly suggest it. As I told you, this is a book that my family read every single year on Christmas Eve. The second book that I want to share with you is, I think my daughter got this at the dollar store. It's The Nativity. It comes straight from the movie, The Nativity. And this is about the birth of Jesus. It talks about Mary. It talks about Joseph, um, them coming together, Mary going to visit Elizabeth. Um, and, and it talks about Herod and it ends with the birth of Jesus. The pictures in this book come straight out of the movie. It is the book that goes with the movie. And so the pictures come straight out the movie. Now, as you can see, it's a lot of small writing, a lot of pictures. Um, it's, it's an okay book. There's nothing wrong with the book. It's a good book. It's a good read, but we prefer the movie. And so every year we might pull this book out and kind of glance through the pictures but we don't read it every year we look at the pictures every year and we get excited and build ourselves up as we get popcorn popped and get hot chocolate made and put all the marshmallows in it and um, get in our comfies and cuddle up on the couch and watch the movie because we do watch this movie every year but the nativity is a good book it's all about the birth of Jesus and this family is all about Jesus so 
I would suggest you watch the movie and you can get the book and you can look at it. This book is, hmm, let's see, it's from the New Line Cinema, it says on here, so it just, it's from the movie, so get the movie. The next book I want to share with you guys is this Charles Dickens book. This is The Treasury of World Masterpieces, Charles Dickens. Big book, right? We are not talking about the whole book. This is a compilation of his books. It has Nicholas Nickleby, Hard Times, and A Christmas Carol in there. I'm going to do a review on this later on, on this book, on all the stories in this book. But right now, for this video, we're going to talk about The Christmas Carol. This is the complete and unabridged version. So it's not an excerpt excerpt from the book. It's not somebody else's variation and version and translation of the book. This is actually Charles Dickens' complete story, The Christmas Carol. This book is, let's see, The Christmas Carol starts on page 731. I think it's about 50 pages. It ends on 781. So it's, it's a 50-page story. So Thanksgiving come, we celebrate, I pull out my stuff and I decorate because I try to hold off as much as I can because I could keep Christmas gifts up or Christmas decorations up all year. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Christmas freak, right? And so um, we pull this out after Thanksgiving and last year this was our Christmas story that we read. We try to read a different story every year. So my family read this last year. My children love this story. So it is the story of the Christmas Carol. There's many versions of the movies out there that um, you might have seen. You can even see Mickey Mouse do the, his version of the Christmas Carol, right? So it's the Christmas Carol. It's about Scrooge, bah humbug, right? And the three ghosts that come and visit Scrooge and how Scrooge have a life-changing event and decides to be a nicer, more loving person for Christmas. Um, it's a great story. My children love the story. They really enjoyed it. Now, let's talk about it a little bit. Charles Dickens. He writes in Old English because that is the language of the time in which he was around. So everything is, is written in Old English. My children liked it. Now at the time, my daughter was seven, eight, eight. My daughter was eight and she understood the on Old English and she enjoyed the Old English. My children went around speaking in Old English for a while after we read this story. It is a great read. Now, if you've ever read any of Charles Dickens' books, any of his stories, like if you've ever read The Great Expectation, it's a great story, just like The Christmas Carol is a great story, but Charles Dickens have a tendency to get very wordy, very descriptive. He will spend a couple pages giving you very in-depth description on the scene, on the person, on all these different things, and so you can get stuck for a couple pages not progressing. The story is not progressing. You're standing still, getting a very descriptive, um, very thoroughly descriptive picture of what is going on at that particular moment or background information. So my children like that. I had some kids who really enjoyed the fact that it was very descriptive because they felt like it made them feel like they were a part of the story. They could very um, vividly imagine themselves in the story because the words were very descriptive. I, on the other hand, found myself time at some found myself at times a little bit bored wanting it to move on and progress on because I'm like okay I got the point already let's go so I don't know how that may work with for you or with your kids but just be aware of that if you like a lot of in-depth description that's great if you've read expectation the Christmas Carol is no different just like in the expectation it, it gets really wordy sometimes for me it got a little boring even though I enjoyed the story overall same things with this story my children what we typically do is we read the book any book we read the book if there's a movie that goes with it we read the book first and then we'll write the watch the movie my kids enjoyed the fact that they watched the movie after they read this book because this book was so descriptive they felt like it helped them to really enjoy the movie more so when they were seeing the ghost they knew that you know there's the one ghost that's kind of like you know the face of a, a child the face of an adult kind of in that weird stage and they got understood what they were trying to portray in the movie a lot more because they read the book so they felt like the movie had more life to it for them so those are the three books that I'm going to tell you guys about um, I would suggest the Christmas Carol because my children liked it um, a lot I got bored with it a little bit um, but because they liked it we did it are we gonna read it again probably not not unless they really insist on it 
the nativity we've read through it once we go back every year to kind of look at the pictures and get hyped up about reading the movie but it's not something that i would read um every time um every year on christmas day we go back and reread out of the bible the birth of jesus so i would rather go read the bible the birth of jesus than go through this but i do really highly suggest the movie um we really enjoy the movie the popcorn and the whole thing that goes with it and then the night before christmas this is a book that we read every year on christmas eve have been doing so for many years and probably will continue on and hopefully if my book lasts i'll read it to my grandbabies many 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 years from now right okay so thank you all for watching if you and your family read christmas books and you have good suggestions and, and good ideas put them down below and share those because i really would like to be able to see that i haven't decided what we're going to read yet this year for christmas and i would like your suggestions thank you all for watching until next time bye